Welcome to the Culture of Healthcare, Health Professionals, the People in Healthcare. This is Lecture A. The component, the culture of healthcare, addresses job expectations in healthcare settings, the organization of patient care within a practice setting, privacy laws, and professional and ethical issues encountered in the workplace. The objectives for health professionals, the people in healthcare, are to define terms used in healthcare and in health professionals' education and training, including clinician, patient, consumer, disease, and syndrome. Describe the education, training, certification, licensure, and roles of physicians, including those in primary care and other specialties. Describe the education, training, certification, licensure, and roles of nurses, advanced practice nurses, licensed practical nurses, medical assistants, and medication aides. Describe the education, training, certification, licensure, and roles of physician assistants, pharmacists, therapists, and allied health professionals. Describe the education, training, certification, licensure, and roles of paramedics, emergency medical technicians, dental professionals, mental health professionals, and social workers. This lecture introduces key terms used to describe healthcare professionals and their education, including education, training, certification, and licensure. Many health professionals provide care to the sick and injured in various settings. They deliver pre-hospital care, such as at accident scenes, inpatient care in hospitals, and extended or long-term care facilities, outpatient or ambulatory care, such as in physician offices and clinics, home care, and more. Health professionals also support patients or consumers with preventive care, wellness services, and self-managed care. The emphasis of this unit is on the roles of various health professionals, but remember that most health care is delivered using a team approach. A patient or consumer is anyone who seeks preventive care, wellness care, self-managed care, or medical services. The term clinician separates those qualified to provide clinical care in medicine, psychiatry, or psychology from those specializing in laboratory research techniques or in theory. Clinician typically means a physician, but clinician may also be used to describe other licensed medical professionals, such as physician assistants, nurse practitioners, and nurses. Allied health professionals, such as radiology technicians, laboratory technicians, pharmacists, and medical assistants also serve key roles in providing patient services. A disease is an impairment of a specific structure or function of the body, which produces symptoms or physical findings. Symptoms are part of the story patients tell about their illness, including specific complaints such as the location of the pain, how often the pain occurs, and the duration of the pain. Physical findings are what the physician or other health professional determines by observation and physical examination. For example, a physician may observe swelling in the ankle and determine the area of most tenderness using maneuvers that increase or lessen the pain. Diseases usually have a specific cause. For example, bacterial pneumonia is caused by a specific type of bacteria. A syndrome is a combination of symptoms and physical findings not easily attributable to a specific cause. An example of a syndrome is carpal tunnel syndrome, which causes pain, burning, and numbness in the hand. Each lecture in Unit 2 describes the sequence that various health professionals go through to become educated, trained, and eligible to practice. Professional health education is a formal program that usually presents lectures and other learning activities, including simulation and patient contact. Depending on the health profession, it may be on-the-job training, a certificate, or an associate, bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree. Health professions training is typically supervised clinical practice with an increasing level of responsibility over time. Certification has several meanings. One definition is a short education or training program, usually lasting one year or less, such as a medical assistant certificate program. Certification by a national health profession organization usually requires completion of an accredited program and an exam. A radiologic technologist, for example, is a certified health professional. Physicians may elect to obtain board certification in a medical specialty or subspecialty by completing an approved residency or fellowship and a board exam. In addition to certification, state licensure is required for many health professionals, including physicians, 
physician assistants, nurses, and pharmacists. State licensure is regulated by the state and may employ a variety of mechanisms for regulating clinical practice, one of which is certification. Education for a physician typically includes four years of college and four years of medical school. The medical school can be either allopathic for medical doctor or osteopathic, doctor of osteopathy. After medical school, physicians typically pursue three to five years of training in a specialty. Fellowship training provides an additional one to three years of study to gain expertise in a subspecialty. Physician specialty certification requires successful completion of an approved residency or fellowship program, a valid license to practice medicine, and completion of a written and or practical exam that varies by specialty and subspecialty. Maintenance of certification is required in many specialties. It often includes specific continuing medical education requirements, quality improvement activities, patient surveys, and periodic specialty exams. In addition to certification, physicians are required to maintain an active state license in order to practice medicine. Some states allow reciprocity, which honors a valid license between states. However, there are usually minimal additional requirements to apply for a license in another state. Licensure is regulated by each state and requires successful completion of the United States Medical Licensing Examination, or USMLE, although exam requirements may vary from state to state. The USMLE is a nationally administered exam with three steps. Step one tests the application of basic science to clinical practice and typically is required at the end of the first two years of medical school. Step two is divided into two parts, a written test of clinical knowledge and a test of clinical skills using actors portraying patients. This test is usually required for graduation from medical school. Step three tests more applied clinical knowledge and is usually taken after the first year of residency. Primary care includes specialties that provide routine care to a patient on a continuous basis. It includes acute care, health maintenance, wellness, preventative care, and management of chronic disease not requiring a specialist. The primary care physician also serves as the gatekeeper and coordinator of additional care when needed by a subspecialist. Primary care specialties are family medicine, which provides care for the entire family, including infants, children, and adults. Some family medicine physicians also provide obstetrical care. Internal medicine, which provides care to adolescents and adults. Pediatrics, which provides care to infants, children, and adolescents. Obstetrics and gynecology, or OBGYN, which provides services to women, including during pregnancy and childbirth. OBGYN specializes in the female reproductive system, but because many women obtain primary care services from their obstetrician or gynecologist, it's often considered a primary care specialty. If a patient does not have a primary care physician, he or she may seek primary care in a hospital's emergency facility, in a freestanding urgent care center, or from a specialist that the patient sees on a frequent basis. The decreasing number of primary care physicians in the workforce has exacerbated this practice. Subspecialties focus on a specific organ system, population, or disease, and they are very similar for both internal medicine and pediatrics. A sampling of the many subspecialties found in today's healthcare field is shown below. Cardiology focuses on cardiovascular disease or diseases of the heart and blood vessels. Endocrinology focuses on organs that secrete hormones, which often control biological functions and other organs. Endocrinologists treat diabetes and metabolism disorders, for example. Gastroenterology treats diseases of the esophagus, stomach, and intestines. Geriatric medicine provides care for patients who are 65 years or older. Hematology oncology focuses on diseases of the blood, such as anemia, and on cancer. Infectious disease specialists provide treatment for diseases caused by viruses, bacteria, and other microorganisms. Nephrology treats diseases of the kidneys and urinary tract. Pulmonary disease and critical care medicine is a broad subspecialty with a focus on diseases of the respiratory system as well as on the needs of patients in critical care units. Rheumatology focuses on diseases of the joints, muscles, and ligaments. Genomic specialists provide a diagnostic service and genetic counseling for individuals or families with or at risk for 
conditions that have a genetic basis, such as Down syndrome and cystic fibrosis. A general surgeon treats common surgical problems in a variety of anatomic locations. Many surgical subspecialists must first complete a residency in general surgery before pursuing a career as a specialty surgeon. This slide lists several examples of surgical subspecialties. Cardiovascular surgery is performed on the heart and blood vessels. Colon and rectal surgeons work with surgical problems in the lower intestinal tract. Neurosurgery deals with surgical problems of the brain, spinal cord, and nervous system. Orthopedic surgeons treat sports injuries and disease of the bones and joints. Otolaryngology surgeons specialize in ear, nose, and throat disorders. Pediatric surgery is surgery on infants, children, and adolescents. Plastic surgery includes cosmetic and reconstructive surgery. Urology surgeons specialize in the kidneys and urinary tract. Radiology is the use of imaging techniques for diagnosis, for guiding procedures and biopsies, and for the use of radiation to treat diseases. A diagnostic radiologist is the most general radiologist who interprets regular x-rays, CT scans, and MRI scans, and performs some diagnostic procedures. There are many radiology subspecialties. Neuroradiologists focus on the brain and spinal cord. Interventional radiologists perform procedures such as inserting catheters into blood vessel to use dyes to characterize the anatomy of blood vessels and the organs. They may use a variety of imaging modalities to guide the insertion of biopsy needles to collect tissues for diagnosis. Pediatric radiologists interpret images of and perform invasive procedures on infants, children, and adolescents. Radiation oncologists use various types of radiation to treat diseases, especially cancer. Nuclear radiologists use imaging techniques that measure uptake of radioactive labeled substances, typically injected into a vein. A general pathologist conducts autopsies and uses a microscope to examine slides of tissues to look for abnormalities. There are several specialty areas within laboratory services, including the overall management of a medical laboratory. Blood banking and transfusion medicine is a branch of pathology that supervises the collection of blood donations and identifies the complex number of blood types for compatibility between the donor and the potential recipient of a transfusion. A cytopathologist examines slides, often of surgical samples, to look at abnormalities in cells, for example, to rule out or confirm a cancer diagnosis. A forensic pathologist or medical examiner looks for causes of death in patients who die suddenly or violently. Laboratory medicine is the science of operating a medical laboratory that includes chemistry, hematology, and microbiology. Pediatric pathologists specialize in the pathology of infants, children, and adolescents. There are a growing number of non-clinical roles for physicians in today's healthcare industry. Some are full-time positions and others may be part-time, allowing the physician to continue working in the clinical setting. Many physicians are involved in administration of hospitals, medical schools, clinics, and private practices. Teaching can be a full-time or part-time job. The clinician-teacher role is one that is being more widely recognized and rewarded. Research, either in the laboratory or in clinical settings, is another frequent role of physicians. Public health, including environmental health, epidemiology, and health promotion, disease prevention, is another option for physicians. With the large number of medical journals and medical books, physicians also assume the role of author and editor. The URL on this slide leads to an informative video on non-clinical roles for physicians. Physicians have many opportunities in the clinical informatics field, which focuses on the effective use of clinical information systems in patient care delivery to drive improved patient care quality and safety. Qualified and experienced physicians are in high demand in this non-clinical area. Also, physicians may serve in an informatics position, either part-time while practicing medicine or full-time. Certification is not required, but typically is highly desired by the employer. Physicians may also serve in a variety of roles with consulting firms, software development firms, and governmental agencies. Examples of job titles for physician informatics positions include Chief Medical Information Officer, or CMIO, Vice President of Informatics, Chief Health Information Officer, 
and Vice President, Medical Director of Analytics. Qualified and experienced physicians are in high demand in this non-clinical area, which appears to be expanding as providers continue to implement clinical information systems. In March 2015, IHS Incorporated, an economic modeling and forecasting firm, released a study, The Complexities of Physician Supply and Demand, Projections from 2013 to 2025, which was prepared for the Association of American Medical Colleges. The findings showed that by 2025, the physician shortage is projected to range from 46,000 to 90,000 doctors. The study examined several scenarios likely to occur in the next decade, among them increased use of advanced practice nurses, greater use of alternative settings such as retail clinics, and delayed physician retirement, and determined that the physician shortage will nonetheless persist. Addressing the shortage of physicians will require a multi-pronged approach, including innovation in delivery, greater use of technology, and improved as well as efficient use of all health professionals on the care team. The study's results confirm that it will require multiple solutions to overcome the physician shortage. This concludes Lecture A of Health Professionals, the People in Healthcare. In summary, this lecture provides descriptions of terminology used in healthcare and in the education of health professionals. It also briefly describes the education, training, certification, and licensure of physicians. This unit provides an overview of primary care physicians and common specialties and subspecialties, and outlines some of the non-clinical roles physicians may assume, either full or part-time.